tidy this up on the second coat. One of the tips you can use when loading your brush is just dip it into the paint and just tap it on the sides a couple of times and basically that then just keeps the paint on the bristles without dripping so you're not trying to struggle to get the paint up to the wall. The reason we use the paint kettle is the fact that the can itself is too heavy to take up the steps so we put some into the paint kettle, just enough as we need really to cut around the walls. When using a roller, fully load the roller from the tray. Apply the paint to the wall using a W pattern and then fill in the middle area. Remember not to spread the paint too thinly because a nice dense coverage will give you a nice even colour. It is good practice to work in small areas at a time cutting in and rollering as you go along. This will give you a nice, even finish. So that's the first coat of emulsion on our walls finished. Allow that to dry before we put the second coat on. Allow that to dry and then we can do our woodwork with our undercoat and then our gloss. There are over 190 Dulux Decorator Centres, so for further advice and product information, call into your local store or visit our website www.duluxdecoratorcentre.co.uk where you can also order online. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This section will show you some professional techniques for painting woodwork and trim. Okay, this next session is looking at painting woodwork uh, and the products you need and also the tools you need. So we start off, once you've rubbed down, uh, the first thing you need to do is obviously just dust off the surface. And you'd normally get rid of that with a dusting brush. The next thing you need to do is choose your, your brush that you use. These are available in all sizes, all types of sizes, uh, in, and in two types of brush. One is a pure bristle brush, which is this one, and this is used for painting solvent-borne products. This one is a synthetic brush, and this is used for painting with waterborne products. The next thing you need to use is a paint kettle, and the idea of kettles is the fact that you don't put contaminated paint back into your pot. The products I have here are all water-based, but they are also available in solvent-based equivalents. Let me tell you about the benefits of using waterborne systems. Firstly, they're user-friendly, environmentally friendly, they're quick drying, they don't yellow, and they actually give you a really good finish. All our systems are still available in solvent or white spirit based, but they do tend to take longer to dry, they do smell, and in time they do yellow. So maybe this is an ideal opportunity to actually start using the waterborne systems. Okay, let's look at some primers for unusual surfaces and we'll start with uh, Dulux Trade Stain Block Plus. This product is a, is a stain block, so it blocks out stains such as nicotine, damp damage, um, felt tip pens, anything like that, one coat and then followed by your finishing system. If we've got surfaces such as ceramic tiles, melamine, uh, hard plastics, anything that's going to give you a problem with adhesion, then we have two products in that range. One is called Dulux Trade Super Grip, and the other one for that extra toughness is called Dulux Trade Ultra Grip. This one is a two pack system, so you just put the two tins together, stir it up for five minutes, and put it on, and you will get excellent adhesion to those unusual surfaces. For more standard products, uh, for example, uh, bare wood, bare timber, our recommendation would be Dulux Trade Quick Drying Primer Undercoat. So one coat of this, and that would be followed by one coat of EcoSure Undercoat, and then two coats of EcoSure Gloss, and then you really get a nice finish once you've gone through this system.
prior to putting on our undercoat, it's really important that we give the surface a nice rub down. Once we've rubbed it down, we need to dust it off with a dusting brush. And then what I'm going to do finally is I'm actually going to use the hoover just to pick up any uh, residue dust because the last thing we want to do is transfer that to spoil the finish we're going to achieve. In an ideal world, you'd fold the carpet back prior to painting. However, if you can't do that, if your carpet is underneath the skirting boards or something like that, you actually need to use some masking tape. Before painting your door, it is good practice to remove the handles and any other fittings. The painting sequence in a room, we would generally start with a window. Um, and the reason we start with a window is the earlier we can do this, the better, because it actually gives you lots more drying time. We really don't want to paint this at four o'clock and then expect the paint to be dry to close the window at five. So windows first. After the windows, we'll do our door and door frames. Nice rub down, good undercoat. And then finally, we'll finish with our skirting boards. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our Dulux Trade EcoShore Undercoat. This is a water-based product and as a result of that we will be using a synthetic brush. One of the best tips I can give you when using this type of brush is to lightly dampen the bristles with water prior to starting. Once you've done that this will really help the flow of the paint. As always we will decant a small amount of paint into a paint kettle and again, the reason for this is that the, the pot itself is too heavy to carry around and also we do not want to transfer any bits and pieces back into the pot when we've finished. There is a right way of painting panel doors. With this, you start with the panels first, so you do all six panels. And then paint the door in the following numbered sequence. So when you cut in, cut in around about 18 inches or one foot at a time. Uh, it's a waterborne product so it will dry fairly quick but just keep your edge going. Apply the paint liberally but not too heavy because the last thing you want are runs and sags. If you're going to be wallpapering rather than emulsioning your walls then you don't actually need to cut in. In actual fact you need to bring the undercoat and the gloss up onto the walls by about half an inch and this will enable you to get a really nice crisp edge when you're cutting your paper. So that's our first coat to the woodwork with our acrylic gloss. The system for this product is two coats, so that second coat will give you a much higher sheen. There are over 190 Dulux Decorator Centres, so for further advice and product information, call into your local store or visit our website www.duluxdecoratorcentre.co.uk where you can also order online. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This section will show you the tools you need to help you achieve a great wallpapering finish. OK, let's now look at wallpapering. Before we actually come on to the wallpaper, let's actually look at some of the uh, materials we need and some of the products we need and some of the tools we need. To start with, we're going to need two, two buckets. One will be to mix our paste in, and the other one, with a nice clean sponge and warm water, is to actually clean the excess paste off of the skirting or off of the ceiling as we paper around the room. There are two types of paste. One is a powder mix and a couple of things to consider here is firstly 
Always read the instructions on the back. This will tell you how many litres of water you need in comparison to how many rolls of paper you're hanging. So it's to get the right mix, to get the right strength. When mixing this paste, use a good quality stirring stick and just gently introduce the powder into the water. By doing it slowly and, and gently, this will avoid getting lumps. Alternatively, we have a polycell ready mixed adhesive. One of the benefits of this is it's ready to go. So there's no lumps in this, we just give it a gentle stir and then we start pasting. Another benefit of ready mixed is because there's less water in this, it actually stops the paper from stretching too much, which will give you a better finish in the end of the day. When applying the paste, pick a good quality brush. This is a four inch brush. The most important thing is that size wise, it's nice and comfortable to work with, i.e. not too heavy. We also need to consider anywhere we overlap, we need to use a overlapping adhesive. And the idea of this is that it basically makes sure that the, where you overlap, it sticks firmly to the paper you've just overlapped onto. So very important when doing a papering job. Okay, so now let's look at some of the tools you need. Firstly, you need a good quality tape measure for measuring your paper before we start. Then you're going to need things like a good quality scissors or a blade. Probably I would actually get two, get both. A pencil to mark your lines as you go along. Next thing you're going to need is a spirit level. This one is mine, so it's actually maybe a little bit too big for some of the jobs we'll be working on. But you do need to use a spirit level, basically to make sure you get a nice straight line prior to hanging paper. The benefit of an apron is that you'll keep all your tools together. So it's well worth considering getting an apron to have all your tools at hand. And then when it comes to actually applying the paper, we've got two options. We can use a wallpapering brush to smooth our paper, or we can use a smoother to smooth down our paper. Both of these will give you a really good, fantastic finish. The idea is to get rid of any bubbles. You might also need a seam roller, and the idea of a seam roller is basically just to make sure that the edges are nice and tight and firm, and you, and you achieve that by using a seam roller. Also, as a cutting aid, to make sure you get nice, neat cuts, you can actually use one of these um, and by holding this in situ, you can actually use the knife to get a real nice, sharp, crisp edge. So we're now ready to actually start using our wallpaper. Prior to putting on your finished paper, it might be worth considering using a lining paper. And the benefit of lining your walls first is the fact that it basically gives you a better finish. So the worse your walls, the thicker the paper. One of the most important things prior to hanging wallpaper is to actually read the instructions. This will tell you soak times, it will tell you uh, how to hang and things like that. So it's very important that you read this information. It's also very important that you make sure you get the same batch number because there can be batch to batch variation. So very important that you read this prior to putting on your finished wallpaper. So we spoke earlier about the benefits of actually using a lining paper. Most decorators will always use a lining paper underneath a wallpaper. However, with papers like this, it's actually quite textured. So in all honesty, you may not need to use a, a lining paper underneath this one. However, if you, if you are going to use a very thin paper, like this pattern here, then really my suggestion would be to get the best out of this would be to cross line the walls first with your lining paper. And finally, the dining room table is never going to hack it, so we really do need a good quality pacing table. There are over 190 Dulux Decorator Centres, so for further advice and product information, call into your local store. Or visit our website www.duluxdecoratorcentre.co.uk where you can also order online. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter.
This section will show you how to plan and get started with your wallpapering project. We're now ready to do some wallpapering. The most important things to consider when wallpapering are where do I start and where do I finish? If that room has a chimney breast as a focal point, the ideal starting point is find the middle, find the centre of the chimney breast and then actually straddle the wallpaper in the centre. So that line will be right down the centre of the wallpaper. That way it will give you a nice, even, balanced effect so you'll get the same amount of pattern on both sides of the chimney breast and this will continue around the room. The other thing you need to consider is where am I finishing? And the reason for that is this is the one place that you'll lose your pattern. So you really do need to give that a lot of thought before starting your wallpapering. Generally, the best finishing point will be at the least viewed part of the room. In this room, I'm going to start in this corner. But never assume that working from a corner or working from a door frame are true because they're almost inevitably not going to be straight. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to mark a line. The line I am marking is approximately five millimeters narrower than the wallpaper. The reason for this is that the wallpaper needs to wrap around the corner but by as little as possible. Strike a line with the spirit level and then work from that line. So, we've decided where we're going to start wallpapering. We've struck our line. The next thing we need to consider is what's going to look best at the top of the wall. It's never a good idea to have this, a, a motif cut in half. So what I'm proposing to do on the first piece, just to give a reference point, is I'm actually going to cut a, an inch above this small leaf. I've now lined the paper up, whereas the top of the leaf is just below the bottom of the coving. Once you've done this, Measure from the bottom of the coving to the top of the skirting. Remember to add 50 mil top and bottom. Mark and cut on the table. And that's my first piece. Once you've cut your first piece, you need to mark and cut your next lengths, making sure you match the pattern. Depending on the pattern drop and height of the room, you will normally get three or four lengths per roll. So perhaps cut a few lengths just to get you going. We're using our Polycell Extra Strong powder paste. You need to follow the instructions on the back of the packet, basically telling you how much cold water to have in your bucket to start with and how many rolls this, this uh, packet will do. Once you've mixed it up, leave it for a few minutes and then just give it a final stir and then you're actually ready to paste the paper. I've now left this for a few minutes just to settle up and Deliberately, it's a little bit on the thick side. So what I'm actually going to do now is just gently add some more water just to get it to the right consistency for actually using for wallpapering. So again, just gently stir it in, uh, no lumps, and that will be ideal to use for putting on wallpaper. <laughs> 